this episode, I'm going to share how to make great double-sided circuit boards in about an hour. Stay tuned. Full disclosure, although I've used flat cam in my previous videos, I didn't share many of the details of the process, mainly due to some glitchy workarounds and compatibility issues that would vary from project to project. Well, flat cam seems to have stepped up its game and it's time to share again. That's what I'm talking about. Either I have too much stuff going on or my boards are getting more complex, but I tend to send out more boards for fabrication these days. It's cheap and the quality is great, but the time to wait for them is a killer. When I need a prototype faster or cheaper, the best option is always to mill it out myself. The total time to finish can be less than a couple of hours and allows me to prove out designs without having to wait a week. In order to do that, you're gonna need a tool to convert your Gerber files or CAM files into a format that the mill can understand. And that's where FlatCam comes in handy. Although FlatCam's been around for several years, recently the project has been reignited, maybe through some New Year's resolutions and a few significant improvements. FlatCam's always been able to create geometry and G-code from your Gerber files. Heck, that's really what it's best at. But anything fancy requires you to get creative. Things like double-sided alignment pins and freeform board cutouts. These all had to be done using different tools like Fusion 360. Thankfully, the Carousel of Progress has been a workover at FlatCam and a bunch of these features have been added to do all this stuff and more. Today I'm going to walk through the setup of a double-sided circuit board demonstrating the best features of FlatCam and what it takes to spin a board in about an hour. At the time of this video, I'm using FlatCam beta version 8.9.0.2 or 3 or 4 or something like that. Anyway, there's a link to the software down in the description where you can go grab it. To use FlatCam, you need some manufacturing files or Gerbers. And regardless of the design software that you use, it should be able to produce Gerber or CAM computer-aided manufacturing files. Some software will generate a single zip that includes all of those files, or others will create a folder and then dump all those files in there as they're generated. It includes things like the top and bottom solder mask, copper layers, silk screen files, all of the necessary manufacturing information. Once you have those, open FlatCam to start working with them. But before that, let's explain FlatCam's environment so it makes a little bit more sense. The sole intent of FlatCam is to generate CNC toolpaths from your board files. It's important to note that FlatCam is a procedural tool which provides different functionality depending on the type of file that you have selected. In general, FlatCam takes a CAM file, converts it into geometry, then to a CNC object, and finally into machine G-code. Along the way, you have complete control over how it performs each of these steps. For example, if you're milling the copper layers, FlatCam will use your Gerber copper file along with the, your user-defined settings to create a geometry object. Object. From the geometry object, FlatCam will create a CNC object based on the desired toolpath configuration, and from the CNC object, FlatCam will then generate G-code and a file that will run on your machine. These are the low-level instructions. It's important to reiterate that FlatCam is procedural, meaning that it's step-by-step, -step, and if any of the parameters need to change for any of the steps, all subsequent steps need to be regenerated. It's kind of a pain, but in order to have all that flexibility, you need to regenerate the steps. For example, if you need to change how isolation paths are generated from the CAM file, you'll need to regenerate the geometry, then the CNC file, and then finally the toolpath that reflects those changes. It's not complex, but it's easy to overlook when you're new at it, and I mean, I'm not new, but you know, some people are new and everybody at some point is new. In addition to copper isolation paths, FlatCam can generate the toolpaths for drilling operations. Importing your drill or Exelon file will bring the holes into your design. And then from this, FlatCam can generate the drill G-code and depending on your need, you can create G-code file for each hole size or combine them as a single file, drilling all of your holes at once. There are lots of flexibility with this tool and it's just really up to your needs. Using what I've explained so far, you'd be able to get through just about any single layer board, um, but if you want to do a double layer board, then you, you're going to need more. Fortunately, FlatCam has a double-sided board tool, which is made just for that. Opening the tool provides capability to identify a mirror axis, which is the axis that determines how the board will be flipped when you do the second side, as well as alignment pins and hole coordinates. Once those are identified, it's as easy as flipping your second layer and generating the geometry, CNC object, yada yada, tool path, and same way we did it for the first layer. With that overview, let's dive in and put this all together to mill a board. For this example, I'll be milling a controller board for my retro arcade. This particular board is used for the D-pad and it's designed as a double-sided board, but in actuality, it's simple enough to be one-sided design. Let's just go with it for now and see how it turns out. 
In FlatCam, I load the top copper Gerber file, select the file, and click on the selected tab. The selected tab, as it implies, will always have parameters relative to the file that is selected. On the selected tab, I determine the geometry that will be created, things like the tool diameter, how many isolation paths, what percent of overlap per pass, etc. And when I'm done, I generate a full geometry. There are other options, including internal and external, but you'll probably want full to get the isolation paths that you need. This generates a geometric representation of the toolpath, and once finished, the new geometry object is automatically selected and the settings are displayed. Next, I determine the depth of cut, feeds and speeds, and then generate a CNC object. By the way, I'm using millimeters as a global unit preference, but you can change it in the system preferences under the edit menu. Once the CNC object is created, next you export the G-code for your machine. By the way, if you need to add machine-specific G-code for initialization or shutdown, you can do that here as well. Now that we have side isolation paths ready to mill. Next we need to create the drill tool paths for the holes. Opening an Exelon file from your CAM files will display the drill diameters used in your board. To generate a drill tool path, you first need to select the holes that you wish to generate a CNC object for. Select which holes should be drilled, then determine the depth, feeds, and speeds, and create the G-code for the holes. And you can repeat this step as many times as you need to for the different diameter holes you may need to drill. My board only has two different size holes, the through holes and the mount holes. If this were a single-sided board, then we could just generate the board cutout using the cutout tool from the Gerber file settings. Since we're doing a two-sided board, we're going to set up and mill the second side before cutting out the board. So next, I load the Gerber file for the second side, open up the double-sided PCB tool from the tool menu, next select the second side from the Gerber drop-down box. Skip down, select the mirror axis. As I said before, this is the axis on which the board will be flipped when we do the second side. So left-click on the grid to set the desired mirror point, then click the Add button next to the point box to capture the coordinate. Now that the mirror axis and point have been identified, I flip the second side by clicking on the mirror button next to the Gerber drop-down box. The board should be mirrored on the axis that we just selected. Next. Next, identify a couple of alignment pin locations on one side of your mirror axis. Do this by clicking on the desired position on the grid with the left mouse click, and then select the Add button next to the Alignment Drill Coordinates entry. The coordinates should be added. After adding another point, next enter the drill diameter before creating the Exelon object. Once it's been created, the alignment holes will be displayed on the grid. If they don't look right, then go back and check your values. Select the newly created Alignment Drills object under the Exelon folder on the main page. Then set the depth, feeds, and speeds, and and then generate the G-code. Save the G-code for the alignment holes toolpath. You can see we're generating G-code for each of these procedural steps and we'll be able to run those on our machine independent of each other. Now that we have the mirroring set up, let's generate the isolation path for the bottom layer. Same as the first time, only this time we select the bottom layer, identify the tool diameter, passes and overlap, and generate the geometry. Next we select the depth, feeds and speeds, yada yada, generate the CNC object, and lastly save the code for the second side isolation path. Hopefully you're naming these all appropriately so you know which of these g-code files are for which process. Once the second side of the board is complete, we need to cut out the board. So let's generate a freeform cutout profile for the board using the cutout tools from the bottom Gerber file. We'll enter the diameter of the milling tool we want to use, then the number of tabs we want to allow the board to stay connected once it's cut out. Keep it from falling out. Save the g-code and we're good to go. So now it's time to run these operations on our copper clad and see how things turn out. If we have all our parameters correct, then things should look great. First we run the top isolation path through hole and alignment pinholes. Once those are done, we use pins in the pinholes to carefully flip the board, aligning the pins and alignment holes as guides for the placement. Once it's flipped, we run the, the bottom side isolation path and then finish with the board cutout. With the milling complete, I lightly sand the board with an ultrafine sanding block to remove any burrs left over from the milling process. Blast it with some air and this board's ready for a solder mask. That's all we're going to cover in this video, but stay tuned for another in the series where I'll cover solder mask and silkscreen options. Here's a sneak peek at the board with the solder mask, and when compared to the manufactured boards, it's a reasonable substitute. It's fast, there's no messy chemicals, consistent and repeatable, and quick to finish. And that's how to make a double-sided circuit board using flat cam in less than an hour. So what's your technique? How would you improve the process? Comment below, I'd love to hear it. And be sure to submit suggestions for future videos over on the DIY.engineering website. All the materials and software are linked in the description below. Buying from the links costs the same and supports the channel. I guess through the affiliate program they throw nickels 
tools my way and it helps pay for some of the tools and materials. Newsflash, I'm starting a weekly live stream for questions and content. If that's something you're interested in, then let me know below and we'll talk about the time and get that now. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook if you want to be updated as to when those occur. And as always, be safe, have fun, and I can't wait to see you next time. Hey, if you like the video, please subscribe to the channel. It's how we're building the community. Also, allow me to bring better content. Also, check me out on these other social networks. There's lots of cool stuff there, too. That's what I'm talking about!